Hi, so I'm in bubble seven, uh, still in lesson five, and there are four activities in this particular level that we're going to go through. Uh, three of them are pretty easy. The one with the bear is a little bit more complex. So this particular one, it just asks you to use that variable circle size, which controls the width and height of the circle so that it will fill up the whole screen and make the whole screen red. And one thing I want you to notice is right now the circle size is set to 400. And since our screen is 400 pixels by 400 pixels, most people without thinking about it would automatically think, oh, 400 would fill up the screen, which would be, the, which would be true if it was a square. But since it's a circle, it is not filling in the corners. So we could do this super quickly and really easily by making just a crazy big number um, that we know would be huge, like 4,000, and we know that that would fill up the screen. Um, but if we want to go up in smaller increments, just so we can kind of find the limits of our circle, I think that's interesting to note. 500 is not big enough. I would have thought 500 might have been big enough. So if we try 550, let's see if that gets big enough and it is so close if you look in those corners you can just barely see the white let's try 555 i still see a teeny little bit in that corner let's just make it 560 And now we have complete coverage of that background. Now the whole circle fills up the screen, just like the picture on the right. Oh, wait, I take that back. I see little notches in the corners. Couldn't see it with the grid on. Oh, so close. I'm going to just raise it up to 570 know that that will get it and we, now we don't see any more border it is good to go okay interesting Ta -ta -da! so in the variable names we have to remember the rules and in this case if you want a quick review of the rules they've got a hint up here and Variable names can't have spaces. Well, if you look at our variable names, it's simply X and Y. We don't have to worry about spaces. There is no numbers. So we're looking for capitalization or spelling errors. And I see the rectangle is fine, but both of the ellipses have capital letters. There we go. If we have fixed it correctly, we should see this picture that is on the right, and we do. Perfect. So we can move on. That's a simple one. I'm going to do the bad naming one, D, first, and then we'll come back to the bear last. So our street light won't run because it says that there is an error in line three. Unexpected token gives me all these weird stuff. So I'm looking at it. We want to fill it with red. Well, that nothing looks wrong with that. Variable shape size. And down here is size. Well, remember that our rules, variable names can't have spaces. So all of these variables are just called size. The easiest way to fix this is just change this one to be size. We could have also changed all of those, but this is by far easier. There we go. Now we have a traffic light, red, amber, green. Now we're going to look last at the bear and we're going to look at how the code makes it can be made easier to read 
with use, the use of variables. And we have these great variables that have been put in here, but they're not called in the program. So we see that the ear size is 80, and the eye size is 15, and the center is at 200, but there's they're not actually in here anywhere. The easy way to see where to put the variables is if we know that ear size is equal or gets the value of 80, let's find where we see the value of 80. And I see that in these ellipses up here. And there's two of them, which makes sense because the bear has two ears. So instead of having 80, we're gonna put in the variable ear size. We're gonna do that. Everywhere we see 80. Now the advantage of this is now we have something that is that can be changed and we can play around with this variable a little bit and we can give the bear big ears. We can give the bear really tiny ears. <laughs> oh my. Or we can give him, which that looks really funny. We can give him, let's go back to his normal ear size. And let's move on. Eye size is 15. Looking for 15. I see two different sets of widths and heights, which would what we would expect for a perfect circle. So just like we did with the ears, I'm gonna do it with the eyes. Okay, and that enables us to make our eyes bigger or smaller with just a simple little click. And now he's got bigger eyes. I'm giving little tiny beady eyes. Or we can put it back like it was for right now. There we go. But you can see now it's a customizable bear, which is something we didn't have before. Now the variable center is used everywhere we want the center to be in the middle of the uh, grid over here. Here's our 200. So you can see 200 is in here a lot. So we're just gonna put center everywhere we see 200. Okay, and I'm going to reset it. Everything still looks good. Um, now, if I change the center, our bear is going to move. But it looks weird. Our bear moved, kind of, but not really. Like, parts of him stayed the same. That. That is weird. So what happened there is some of the things when they move have to change in more than one spot. I do see a center that I missed, but all of these, if we're gonna change the, the center to a different value, and this is all the X values, then we also need to change the x values of everything else relative to the center. So let's say if we if we move the whole head over, then that means that this ear needs to move over by the same amount. And so related to the center, 130 is compared to 200 is 70 less than that. I can come over here and put in center minus 70. And that makes sense that the one below that then is center plus 70. Let's see what that looks like. And you can see, oops, I need to change it. Now our ears should move. And they did. They moved with the head. The, the y-axis we did not need to change. 
because it's moving in the same level. It's not going up and down. It's only going from left to right. Alrighty. And our eyeballs, we need them to move as well. So since this one is plus 35, then we can tell that the other one will be minus 35. Oops. Minus 35. Be set. None. Okay, I accidentally set my variable to 2000, which makes my bear go away. There we go. He's back. I can make this 275, and now he should move to the right. And he did. And if I want him to move to the left on the page, I can go and make the number smaller. And there he moves to the left. So you can see we can now use these variables to customize that bear, which this adds some interactivity for the user. And is really what makes coding fun and what makes your games interactive. Without variables, your games would be terribly boring. So I'm not gonna do level eight, which is your assessment level. Um, and in this level, you have to make some adjustments to make your face, uh, make the size of the eyes the same. And you also need um, to use the eye size variable to do that. So you can't just change the X and Y value. You've actually got to use this variable um, in your program. And it should be free of syntax errors. If you can't remember how to use that eye size variable, go back to level seven and look and see what we did with the bear. For the challenges, um, there are different things to, to look at here. This first one is just drawing and being creative. So if you finish early, I highly recommend that you do that. Um, and then there's a free play. So this one, string variables, is up till this point, you've been using variables with only numbers. String variables are using things like colors and other um, non-numerical things for, for those variables. Um, so that's what a string value is. In this case, it's colors. They want us to add in another color and give it a we're going to modify it to create a new image with different colors. That's what it says. So we run it. It looks like this. Um, so we could add in, it looks like the pattern here is there's a circle in the middle. We have a heptagon, a hexagon, a pentagon, and seven, six, five. So we can add in Really, it's just a square. So we could add in a rectangle. But we want it to be a different color. So I forgot about that. Let's add in another variable with a new color. Let's call this one color five. And what are possible colors we can use? We can go over here to W3Schools and look at all the same colors that we could use for CSS. We can use here. So I'm going to use purple. And let's see. I think I'll use Rebecca purple. Hopefully that will work. All righty. So, we want 
to go back to the drawing and notice the fill comes before the shape. So we're going to put the fill in here. So we're going to call it color five. And we want our rectangle to be at, I want it to start at the origin. And I want it to be 400 by 400. Basically, I want it to fill up the whole screen. Oh no. So, problem here is it's covering up everything else. So let's drag it up here to the top. I'm a little concerned about not seeing the purple. So right now, I'm just going to take off Rebecca purple and just make it purple. There we go. That worked. Now, new image with different colors. What a difference that purple background made. I like it. So, if you had a game that used a lot of the same colors throughout, maybe as a theme, then that would be one thing that you could do is use a string variable, which is variables that are not necessarily numbers. Continue. That is all I'm going to do for this particular lesson. I hope that this has been helpful. And if you have any questions, please let me know.